We're working on a 2014 Ford Escape uh, with the 1.6 liter turbo. In a previous video, we diagnosed that it needed a starter motor. In this video, we're going to be replacing it. First thing we want to do is disconnect the battery. We can remove this negative battery post here. It's a 13 millimeter. We'll wrap it in a towel so it doesn't make uh, contact again. So the starter motor uh, resides right here and there's three bolts that hold it in. There's a bolt you get from up top and then two you get from down below. And then of course you have the main power and then the uh, S terminal that need to come off the starter as well. So the manual has us take off the air box. There's a couple of screws here, one, two, three, and I believe there's a fourth one uh, back there, and they are eight millimeter. To pull the box out, there's this connector, this clamp gets loosened, and then this little rubber piece gets pulled over, and then it's just held on with grommets, so it should just pull up from that point. I found pulling uh, the box up and out of this little grommet, that's its uh, resides in this little grommet hole there. Pulling it up and out first uh, really exposes these um, these clamps so they come off better or easier access when the box is pulled up first. Then you can unclamp one of those and then pull it off. Now that, that box out of the way, uh, it allows you to move these hoses and stuff uh, around and, and you get access with one hand from here and then it allows you to get um, a socket onto that, that upper bolt. It's still going to be a pain. There's really not a lot of room, but that's, that's just how you have to do it. So underneath, we want to take the skid plate off uh, and then this pipe. Now, I already had this pipe off for the diagnostics process, but it, there's a clamp here for one end. And then up top, there's uh, another clamp that comes off. So this top end comes off of the uh, throttle body and then this bottom end slides out of this hose and then it, ju it just comes right out so underneath there's two bolts you can see really easy that one and that one come off from underneath so no problem 13 millimeter just to make better room uh, for myself I took off this uh, cable here it's just a 13 millimeter uh, and I moved it out of the way uh, this hose here, I just uh, bungee corded out of the way. Um, this line here, I just disconnected it from here. And it's just a pinch. You pinch it and pull and it disconnects. Um, and then off of its little rubber piece here, just so it can have room to flex, I uh, disconnected it and then pulled off its little rubber piece. And then this hose, this top hose, um, goes back, goes back to that right there, that nipple. And I just pulled that off and out of the way. I think that's all I did. So now it kind of gives me a little more access from this side. Uh, it's still not the best, but I'm trying to get to that bolt uh, down there. But there's just no room. So that's my attempt to make more room to get that bolt out. All right, so got that top bolt. That was the room I needed. I was just pulling that hose and getting that kind of stuff out of the way. What got that bolt is a deep with a um, socket with a head like this. That's how I was able to get it. So, and then once I got it off a certain amount, then I was able to get it with my finger with the socket on it and then just back it off with my finger. I would recommend getting this one first. It's the hardest. Um, but if you get the bottom ones first, then do this one last, the starter could kink a little and that bolt can be harder to come out. So I'd do that top one first and then it might be easier with your fingers if you do it first. All right, so that's off. So now we can work on getting that power uh, off and then the uh, S terminal off. So from up top, you can pull the starter out, turn it. And then you can get that needs to come off and then there's another little one right here that needs to come off and then this plastic piece separates and then the starter's free to come out completely all right with some wiggling and jiggling the starter came out the bottom once these are unbolted it wasn't too hard to get it out the bottom just had to move some hoses around wiggle it out 
So if you want the Ford uh, part number, that's the new one we're putting in. Uh, otherwise, if you're going aftermarket, just make sure they, you know, form and everything looks the same before installation. So now we can go ahead and install it. We'll put it up from the bottom and then put our terminals on and then work on getting it bolted. Now I'll probably bolt it, those two bolts underneath first, just to get them started. And then I'll go back and get that top one in. When tightening our S-terminal, which is the 10 millimeter, and our main power, which is a 13 millimeter, we want to be careful not to over uh, tighten them. That is 53 inch pounds, the 10 millimeter, 53 inch pounds, and then 109 inch pounds for the um, 13 millimeter. All right, so underneath I was able to get those two in, just wiggle the starter and get it in, but they're not in all the way. I want it to have some play, so when I go up and put that, that lousy top one in, uh, I'll have some play to get it in the hole. So let's go do that. So putting that top bolt back in, I got smart. Uh, got a little wobbly. This is a quarter inch uh, wobbly with a quarter inch uh, 13 mil shallow, uh, and then an extension, and then my, my ratchet. But that helped getting it in a lot. So I'm sure the same setup can help get it out. Why didn't I think of that before? Uh, the starter bolts are torqued to 26 foot pounds. Once you have all those tight to your satisfaction, and we can go ahead and put our hose back on. Uh, any connectors we disconnected, this cable can go back on. I think that's it. Then we can put our air box uh, back on. Again, it just locks into that hole. Uh, right here has its little holder, uh, and then that clamp there. Uh, and then we'll put the hose, our intake uh, hose back on, and then our skid plate. Before we do the skid plate though, we'll go ahead and crank it over, fire it up. Uh, we'll put our battery back together after all this is put back on, fire it up, uh, just to confirm that it is fixed. Also on this uh, turbo intake hose, there's a bolt. This was not bolted on, so I didn't mention it at the beginning because I didn't have to unbolt it, so don't forget it. I right, got everything all back together. Uh, got our battery cable hooked back up, so let's go fire it up. And there we go. All right, that is a confirmed fix. Well, there you go. That's how you can replace a starter motor on a 2014 Ford Escape uh, 1.6 liter turbo. The hardest part of this job was getting that top bolt off. Um, I believe taking that, I, th I think it's the heater core hose, not sure, but that little hose off that I showed you, take that off, uh, air box, and use a wobbly, uh, and you can get in behind there and, and get that top one off. So, I uh, don't know why I didn't think of that at the beginning, but I did end up thinking about it eventually, so learn from my, my struggles. Struggles real, y'all. Other than that, you know, pretty pretty straightforward. You know, you got the two bolts underneath. Those come out, you know, fairly easy. Uh, it's just that last third one. So, all right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, like, subscribe. See you on the next one.